1 million manpower. This seems like not much for EU4, especially with the death meta, but what if we can achieve it in less than 100 years? There were only three choices that I had for this campaign. Poland into Commonwealth. Poland into Russia. Or just Moscow into Russia. And the choice seemed pretty obvious. Let's go and do Russian campaign because I don't have one on YouTube. But before we start, I have a free EU4 DLC giveaway for you. All you have to do to join it is to be a subscriber of this channel, leave a like on this video and comment it. Alright, first fix first, let's set up the rivals. It's a pretty general setup which is going to be Novgorod, it's going to be Lithuania and it's going to be Kazan. So three our neighbors that we would be planning to kill very soon. Second step are going to be estates and here is semi-normal setup. Remember we are a duchy at the start of the game so there might be some problems with our local following early game but that's fine. What I'm going to do is standard admin points, standard meal points, then we are going to dev our provinces once with the meal point, we are going to get a power point from the burgers, that's zero of the crownland, oh yeah. Then I'm gonna sell the titles. Hmm, <laughs> that's a lot of money that we are having. I'm gonna dev with admin points once, and I'm gonna seize lancers at 5%. From the diet, it's actually asking me to conquer some provinces from Kazan, so that will be one of our first goals together of killing the Novgorod, and that's free the admin points that we are going to get for it. Here it will be important to get a yearly apart how to rate it to stack it ASAP and just some general bonuses to the clergy. I'm gonna take the advisor cost right away in all, all of the states, number one, number two, and number three, so I can start using the advisors right away and take the advisors, they are going to be super important, we are not earning much of the money at the start. So it's just going to be level 1 advisors, but don't worry, for the time, once we increase our income and everything, I'm gonna pump up those numbers. At the same time, we have Metropolitans to set up, each one of them is giving us 5 Pacha Heart Ritchie, so right away I'm starting with 15 of it, it means that I can go and take improved relation and I guess expansion impacts, because I'm gonna conquer a lot of flat soon, but let's not take it yet, I'm gonna take it. During my first wars, I know, I'll say some party heart ready on that. Generally, it will be important to grow for the mission tree. And we are having mission tree focused on the conquest. Invade Novogorod requires me to get the nation to the force limit. So we basically need 11 more thousand of troops. And that's easily doable because we are just going to get... Yes, we are going for the grand company, which is 2.5 ducats monthly. See, so that's 34 and 36. And... We are gonna get 2000 of Strelzy. This is going to be, get us mission for the Novgorod. At the same time, you can see that I have mission to get claims in the steps. And to get it, I just need one of the provinces over here. And I need to convert it to Orthodox. So I'm just gonna actually get from my mission tree on Kazan. But first things first, we need to deal with the Novgorod. Or actually, I'll probably not do that because this time the ally is with Lithuania. So I can just wait until they, you know, Lithuania goes to the Pearson Union. Well, in the meantime, we can try dealing with Kazan in our first war, so I can get my troops on the border to deal with it first. There's no rush of the other things. There it goes, we are on our first limit. That's plenty of claims on the Novgorod and we have 36,000 troops. So it will be just, you know, easier to deal with the Kazan ASAP. And the moment you find gets under the pew of Poland, I'm gonna attack Novgorod as well. I rule it quite bad, 3 1 2, but at least he has ex aggressive expansion impact. So I'm just going to get him as leader, he's a nice one. And let's just go and declare war on the Kazan. And it's going to be not three conquests, it's going to be just the conquest of uh, Samara. All of my subjects will come and help siege down everything. So let's send these guys to Kazan, let's send these guys to Carpet Siege, and let's send these guys to Crimea at the moment I'll be able to pass there. Now as I got my vassals to be supportive, you see that everyone is getting into the Tloga province, so you can go on and use them to win the battles of our enemies, and we'll be trying to catch them... Oh, they're in Moskva here. Let's actually Moskva get the defensive edict. 
So going to, yeah, exactly, trying to gauge in situations like this. So maybe let's stand. Those guys are movement locked. They're going to be defenders, but in the woods. So not so good for the horde, right? Let's go and see how this battle will go for us. And I believe that is a possible stack wipe. We need to win before, before the 31st of August. It's 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. Saying they're going to reinforce it on time. Like, really? Oh, they are one day late. Oof. Now they are, they are attacking me on the forest. It should be like way easier for us. Yes, that's a wipe. Okay, that's a very good starter. And you can just go and try dealing with Crimeans. In Moskva, when this stack is going to carpet siege Crimea, so wipe is done quickly. You can see Lithuania is still not under a personal union. And that might be actually a possible wipe on them. I have 15 days to win this battle. I'm attacker, but on the forest, meaning that the horde is quite useless over here. They will reinforce it on time, actually. Hmm. Yep, they reinforce it on time. You can see on the losers that it was quite worthy for us, but I would prefer to not lose any troops. Now, what? Lithuania is considered a great power? What happened to Poland? They're still in the regnum. So see, I still believe that my decision to go after Kazan first was very good. There is the Moskva Kremlin event that, okay, can take uh, different bonuses from us and give us different things. You know, so I'm just going to lose 5 prestige, it doesn't matter. We cannot afford to expand the Kremlin at this time. We need a Jagiellon! That's what I love! So, Mr. Jagiellonczyk will be on the throne of Lithuania, meaning that Novgorod is out of the allies and he only has 11,000 troops. So I'm gonna send those two stacks to go and start dealing with them. These guys, once a white piece Uzbek out of the war, will come also to help. With capital of Uzbek down, I believe I should be able to piece them out. Yes, and I could break their relations with Great Ord for the future war with them. And maybe Kazan as well, no, but so just go for the Great Ord had a little bit of the money so cousin was if is free to be pissed out and from them i just want a couple phrases here and to humiliate them as my rival to get my power production higher so i can start getting power points from the high power attraction so it's those provinces a core of perm and some money this would be 52 argus expansion but remember i was supposed to take this or an improved relations and I guess expansion impact, so it's in fact 46. Or maybe instead I'll just go for my mission. But instead, let's take those two provinces. More money. So I can feed Perm with them and save some admin points for ourselves so we can take the idea groups quicker. So let's just go for it. And I'm gonna give those two northern provinces to Perm. And we are gonna attack. Novgorod right away as they still oh they got an ally <laughs> but it's an ally so now our power projection is 66 and we've got other points for getting the mission so i'm gonna rival horde and i'm gonna rival denmark and let's go and attack mr Novgorod for torzok which is an easy war goal look he was paid so it's fine uh, you go and siege down this fort, you go for Tozok, uh, no thank you perm, you go take it down with the Odoyev, and my vassals will also start helping soon with the sieges, I will change them to siege attitude. This will be the key in this run, cheaper advisors, I'm gonna to right away use this level 2 cheaper advisor, he's still making money and I should technically even make him level 3 because I can afford that, it's just 3.5. 47 and you can say it's not bad we have 600 ducats and uh, the war with uh, this guy should be really close to peace out i pretty much only need to get them to low attitude and i'm doing that by carpet sieging all of their runs there we go i can piece them out it's going to be all of those provinces plus <laughs> just a little bit of money and you can see that i guess expansion is not a problem send the peace deal now we need to think how much of it we actually want to acquire by ourselves and how much we want to give to the vassals. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give those two to Pskov and I'm gonna give this one to Belozero. So no Pskov, let's go to Belozero here 
And the rest, I can combine myself because it won't be that many power points. And I anyway have to decrease for exhaustion, so it's going to be 186 of power points. So you can see that we've got a very nice opening. And I did actually a misplay already, because for this mission tree, I need one of those three provinces. So I should have taken this from Kazan. My bad, we are going to take it from the Great Ord, I guess, but I just need to make a claim first. And we are right now considered a great power, number actually six. So we bring in this up and uh, let me turn off the fort so we maximize money all the time. You can see this is what I mentioned. Crownland is a problem, but don't worry, as the conquest is coming, we are also increasing the Crownlands to over 10. So keep the Aphodon in the lower amount and soon I'll just decrease it in all of those provinces. So I could again sell the titles, but I think at this point, let's actually keep it over 10. So I'm gonna sell the die to get everyone over 50 and I'm gonna just seize land. So it's over 10 and this Alphonomy, at least in a piece that I won't be increasing anymore because it's an easy amount to update. Why for the mission? There it goes. That is another claim that we'll get for free, and that is a claim against Livon Order, which has no really nice allies. So I'm gonna use it very quickly to, you know, spread our expansion. We got some on the Orthodox, we got some on the Muslims, and right now we'll get some more on the Catholics. So let me start the war with the Great Ord right away for the conquest of Tambov or something. And the second I'll be having this war under control, I'm also, what is the army? 23 of everyone, but it's 11k. I'm also gonna just go and take care of Livon and Order. So at this point, yeah, my vassals come and help me sieging. This is, this vassal swarm is very useful. I really just died. This might seem like a bad news, but no, it's actually extremely good news because in four years I get three, four, five rulers. So this is amazing. And Actually, with our income and everything, I'm gonna boost this advisor to level 2. He costs 3 ducats, and I'm losing money, but I have money to, you know, afford it. So Transoxen actually came and started helping them, but the thing is, I just set my vassals as supportive, and just look what is going to happen here. So I just, in case, I'm just actually gonna start reinforcing it from all the sides. Oh, the army quality is... Ah, they have the fourth mil tech. That's great or has no. It's just it's just the Sans Oxana. Oh my god. What is this? I need to get out of this war. I have to get off this planet. I mean I just yeah, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine, I just actually just need uh, one of those two provinces, I'm just gonna take both. No, just my claims and some money, it's fine. We just need it for the mission to unlock more of the claims. Let's go and attack them right away because they have just 6,000 groups. Allies will help, but they won't be quick. Meaning that I can already start coming here and the other stack will... Okay, they did not pay for the revel fort, I did not see it. That was unexpected. So the moment I bridge the walls here, because I won't be there on time to, to rush it, so the moment I bridge the walls here, I'll just rush this fort down with my mercs. Wiping and just standing on Riga is enough to wipe Pisan out of the war, that's more war scope for us. And uh, what if we could does just go and occupy a couple of provinces from Teutonic Order and also get them out of the war without an actual fighting? They are trying to siege down my forts here, so I'm just gonna get the defensive edict, but I don't think uh, they will be very successful in it. Right, I think that's the point where we should peace out because they're sitting down Moskva and it's getting better and better for them. So let me actually maybe not stay war reparations and this amount of the money. And there's expansion, it's not a problem. Peace this out. I'm gonna give, uh, let's go to Pskov. I'm gonna give one promise to Pskov. And those two I will keep for myself, just delete the fort and uh, send this to core the provinces. Yes, Moscow is getting a lot of very nice events with the DLC and I have a choice between both is giving me the guarantee from progress but it's either moral armies and military cost for 25 years or trade efficiency and institutional spread for 25 years so the choice is quite easy in this case. 
couple hour steps mission tree for the claims here I need to do something with Tambov, right? It was Tambov province. It's this one province and then Tambov area. So that's exactly this. So I need to state this province. Fully stated. So now we can see it's uh, minus 3.7. After a month, thing is going to update. Oh, that's a lot of money. And it's also development and non accepted culture. Development, non accepted culture might be a bigger issue, but let me exploit the development to make it a little bit better. So now, if you go here, you see it's minus 1.6. Okay. The culture, I can't really accept because I don't have much of it. What if we only get the state edicts to enforce religious dignity? Now it's uh, minus 0.6. And we could also theoretically get an advisor for the uh, conversion cost. Okay, let's get this guy an actual level 2. That costs a little bit of money, but I can afford it. It's now see that it's going to take 72 months totally worth it one more important thing about 1454 is that i can start annexing my vassals and first of them that i'll do is going to be Peru because i have a mission for them and that is going to be done on 11th of november thank you so much that would take eight years but if we go back to them you can see that they it's nine okay so i can just do this sick and do this, sick. So it will be done in 1461, just takes one year. I increase my development in Moscow right now already to 25, and they are still loyal. By the way, on all the other vassals, I did not do that earlier, that's my bad. I should just enable the diver trade and see how much it can increase my income. That's actually three more ducats monthly. Totally worth it, and in a second I'll finally get my Ivan Veliki Rudikovich on the throne. Exactly now, the House of Poland, <laughs> almost Poland, uh, Svetlana 202, no thank you, and 323 Ares Bat, and we can try just disinherit it and uh, fight for a better one because our ruler is 15 years old, so we have time, it just hurts our prestige and manageration. It's now way better. There goes the first guarantee form and of course I'm going for the manpower for our goal. We are far away from it, but don't worry, we will get there. What I can do right now, I can take five years of not fighting to go and annex not one, but two vassals at the same time. And I should have enough of Diplo points to do it. Let me just bring this guy on level two. Which hurts the income, but it's fine. Once I turn off the armies, it will be positive balance, and I'll be having enough of diplo points to next up both of the vassals on time. With my admin focus, it's time to get actually ahead of time the fifth admin tech. The institution is not even close to count to us, that's why I'm getting this ahead of time, and innovativeness will be of fair use. And my first idea mm -mm, is not quantity, it's going to be economic. Because we need to start deving our provinces, especially steps, ACP. Why steps? I will show you later. This is the moment when I get my crownlands to 20. It will lack a little bit. After the next war, I'll probably do it. But anyway, let's go on Sisland. 19.1. I need one more war. And theoretically, I have a mission to dev a province, but I need the diplo points. I cannot really do it. Let's just go and build the church in Moscow. You know, in Lockhart, it's going to be actually useful because 0.33 because we'll be you know concentrating development for Moscow to get it quickly and remember in the long term I can get a Kremlin to give us a hundred percent local empire modifier in this province so actually concentrating development towards it it's gonna be a health worth it first echo idea is coming and it's going to be even more interesting because we're getting innovativeness for this and the more innovativeness the more power costs the more power costs more death costs we are going to have. Here comes the annexation of Pskov. Thank you so much. Of course it will slow down annexation of Perm, but it kind of doesn't matter because I have a free diplomat right now to go and declare the war, but I'm not gonna declare the war until I convert Tambov. Finish the conversion. Now, yes. Tame the steps. Meaning millions of Pernament claims, this is what I love about Muscovy. Pernament claims made. Now just thinking it's going to be, uh, probably yeah, I'll start with the Great Orch. So let's declare the war 
I need to wait um, yes, a day, actually, not even the month tick. And I will give myself one more month tick to regain this guy's morale. Well, these guys will get on the border event and I can turn on those three forts so they'll just not randomly switch them down, you know, out of nowhere. Okay, uh, let me declare the war. It's going to be Saratov war goal. No, it's a fort. Let's go for it, Kara. They'll call a lot of guys, but it's fine. Go for a Strakhan. Go here this time, not behind in the deck. I'm actually ahead in the deck. I have the fifth one. And there goes the second economic idea. It's time to white piece Uzbek out of this war. See, it's actually they're going to agree for 19 ducats. That's of help. We are left with those countries. The worst problem is with Transoxian and the amount of armies. And they actually have up to date with the deck. So I'm just bringing up everyone to come and defend from them here. This is actually something that will be very helpful. Decrease Alpha in all of the provinces by 10. That will be of big help and I could take the next mill deck but I don't want to take any more mill decks ahead of time and this is because we will start staring the provinces soon. Integration of Perm just ended, this is even more beautiful borders and let me right away go concentrate and state those provinces, this is actually my part of my state already and that gives me another mission which is just diplo points for annexing them and here will be about the colonization so it's more long term thing to do and uh, we would be hitting mil points cap soon so I'm just gonna get the boyars loyal and we're gonna death and they're actually asking me to get 30 of prestigious boyars no no we need... ah... burgers burgers come on I'm gonna do it anyway, that's three admin points. We really need the admin points. How close are we to peace out? Close, but not close enough. Uh, let's take those provinces. Most importantly, border with Crimea, so we can expand into there soon. And on top of that, take a little bit of the money from them. Yes, let's go for it. It's very good. And next step, Novgorod. And anyway, I'm gonna seize land again and now we have 24 of crown land meaning that alpha in the provinces is decreasing uh it's a month tick uh this actually yeah say it's zero in this case it's actually even decreasing as it's a peace time so i'm gonna use that to decrease alpha in provinces where it is above 40 right just do this that would be mainly the promises for example that i got from the vassals that i annexed it's fine it will be a little bit of the rebels but it's gonna be worth it in the long term we are increasing our economy with the increased economy i will be able also to get even better advisors so yeah as mentioned i will start staffing but just a little bit because we don't have uh, lawyer burgers and prosperity anywhere so just go to development, do it a few times to keep the mill points below the cap. And they actually shoot Korneva if I'm diving it. Just siege them Modoyev and then just gonna white piece them because this way I'm gonna have a shorter truce with Novgorod. And for the Novgorod, once I siege down the capital, I can take pretty much everything over here with the exception of two provinces. So in five years, thanks to the truce with Odoyev, I might to follow the next Novgorod, which we do real need to get claims on Lithuania. There goes Novgorod siege, and as promised, take a look. I can take all of those provinces, blockade anyone else from getting Novgorod, and just left actually with two provinces to take. So set the peace deal, pretty much no against the expansion. The war score cost is right now 46%. And I could take it all for myself, but remember, we are feeling echo ideas and we're having problems with the calf capacity. So I'm just gonna go to P0, and I'm gonna start feeding them with as many provinces over here as possible. I think I should be able to actually give them everything. And you know, in a couple of years, I'll just start annexing them. See, it's a big bulldozer, but it seems like it's big, but it's just 59 <laughs> development. In fact, why our player's map mode is looking like this right now. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and remember that we have a free UFO DLC giveaway over here. All you have to do to join it 
is to be subscribed to this channel, leave a like on this video and comment it.